lagi Hello, everyone. Nice to have you. Can you hear me? Are you hearing me? Let me know. If you're hearing me. We'll begin in a bit. Thank you very much. Michaela, we'll begin in a bit. I'm just waiting on the host, Miss Matt David.
todo. Okay, Miss Matt David, I got your message. Hi, Miss Williams. Hello, good afternoon, Miss Matt David. Good afternoon, everyone on the panel. Afternoon, students. Good afternoon. Hi, good afternoon. teachers. Hi, hi, students. Thanks for joining us. All right, so. Um, we were waiting to, for a few more students to join in. Currently, we have uh, Miss Williams about 15 students, and then the rest are teachers. Um, we do have currently 26 students and teachers slash parents watching on YouTube. So thank you for all of our YouTube viewers on the live stream. Um, so if you guys can just give us maybe, an, if Miss Williams, if you permit it, just about another five minutes, and then we'll just start. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you, guys.
this or All right, everyone, um, Miss William, you might slip and you might unmute your mic. We are begging you, please mute it for the students that are on the Zoom live. Please, 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 please. And for the students on YouTube, again, thank you for tuning in. I know that you guys would have loved to have been on the Zoom call, but the Zoom call has its maximum. So at least with the YouTube, please type your comments, your questions in the chat. And me and Miss Williams will try our best to answer everybody's questions and comments as the presentation goes on. And as a reminder, the comments on YouTube are live and very much being seen by us and your teachers. So, Uno, please be civil and do not share Uno's private information and certain of Uno's things on the YouTube. I beg, I beg, I beg. Okay? Um, so just to quickly introduce um, Miss um, Williams. Guys, Miss Williams, we are so grateful. You know, understand this with us. We're grateful, we're grateful, we're grateful that you're here. And especially the, ex the wealth of experience that Miss Williams brings to the table, guys, for us um, on our virtual pep lecture. So to quickly tell you, Miss Williams has her diploma in education from Chartwood Teachers College in History and Geography. She has a Bachelor of Science from the University of the West Indies, majoring in International Relations and Management Studies. And she has a Master's of Arts from the University of Toronto, um, from the Department of Sociology and Equity Studies in Education. And she's currently doing her PhD from the University of Toronto in the Department of Social Justice Education. Um, Ms. Williams has also, just to give you some background, a um, little bit more background, she has taught at St. Hughes High School. She has been a part-time lecturer at the University of the West Indies. She has taught at St. Catherine High School. And currently, she is a lecturer in the Department of Social Sciences, the Faculty of Humanities, at the most greatest, most honorable Michael University College. He got Michael. So that's just a very quick background, guys, um, to Miss Williams. Again, thank you, thank you, thank you for tuning in on the Zoom and on YouTube. And Miss Williams, take it away. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Miss Matt David. Thank you very much, students, for joining. 
I, I have planned a very interactive session. So there are times when I will speak, there are times when you will speak, there are times when you'll be given a little task to do, and we're hoping at the end of it that it ties up in a nice bundle to make you competent and able to write the PEP exam this year. I'm going to begin by sharing my screen. Okay, so I'm gonna put it in a um, slideshow view. One second. Let me unshare it for a bit and then put it in slideshow view. Okay, so how is everybody? Everybody's good today? Nobody wants to talk? I'm good. Okay, that's good. I see somebody in the chat. I can't really take the chat now because I am, um, I may get a little distracted, but Prime Davian and J Jadan say they're fine. All right, thank you very much. So this presentation, the physical environment and its impact on human activities. And I am the presenter, Ms. Rhonda K. Williams, and I'm currently employed at the Michael University College. For today's workshop, we're going to be looking at the following topics. We're going to be examining maps, its definition, keys, and types of maps. We're going to be looking at what is a thematic map. We're going to also be looking at definitions of key landforms, plains, valleys, hills, mountains, and plateaus. We'll be having a little fun with that with our atlases. We're going to be comparing the heights of hills versus mountains in Jamaica, the use of trig stations, how to use trig stations to identify heights on a map. We're going to also be looking how to arrange hills and mountains according to their heights. Also, we'll be looking at how human activities and its impact on the environment affect us all as citizens in Jamaica. And then we're going to, in, in between, we're going to interweave it with a differentiation between a factual source and an opinion. So um, that will be coming consistently throughout the presentation. So, Ms. Matt David, I'm going to need your help with this one. Okay, Ask I am the, ready. Can somebody, some bright student, look on the two images in front of you, one of a photograph and one of a map, and can somebody tell me what is the difference? Miss, um, Miss, for the map, Miss, it tells you, Miss, it tells you every location. And it tells you, which it tells you, it tells you like what mountains are, and what hills are located here. And Miss on the map, Miss on for the photograph, Miss it, Miss it shows you like a picture of the area. Okay, good, good try. Anybody else want to try? Yes, Miss. Go ahead, Omari. One, one is physical and one is political. That's what you're seeing on the, uh, on the two images in front of you? Yes, yes. That's the differences that you're picking up. Okay, then we're going to get back to your... You, th that's a very interesting response. One is physical and one is political. Remember, I asked you to look at the photograph versus a map and tell me what the difference is. Miss mm -hmm. Matthews? Yes, on YouTube, um, they, Diana Rose says a photograph has more detail in picture. Yes. yes, right. And now what about the map? Did you say anything about the map? No. Anybody on YouTube would like to answer? Remember, I'll read out your comments or the answers for you guys. Miss May, Miss May, I try? Yes, go ahead. Miss Map showed you the physical and the way to get there. 
But the photo I can show you the view. I like that one. And I think I'm going to stop there. Um, I, I didn't get your name. I think it's David and Jaden. You were the last respondent. Yes, they responded last. That yes, Miss. Yes, David and Jaden, you were correct. But I need to go back to our earlier response where the student had said the difference that he was viewing was that one was political and one was physical. And I said, I, I, I'm going to get back to that point and I'm going to explain that point now. The, the question is asking to look at the two items and see the difference. When you supplied me with the answer that one is political and one is physical, you were only, well, you were not answering the question. You were, you were telling me the different types of maps, but you were not answering the question. And students, boys and girls, this is very important for the PEP exam. When you are writing the PEP exam, you must answer the question asked and not the question you think the examiner should have asked. The last uh, set of students, I think it's Davia and Jaden, they both answered the questions correctly because they, they told us what was the difference and so if you're writing well when you're writing the paper exam and if you get a question that puts to put side by side a photograph and a map and is asking you what is the difference you must explain the difference between the photograph and the map and you must not tell the examiner what is a map and different types of maps because that was not the question asked Okay, so let us move on to what is a map. So a map is the way in which we can show different parts of the earth. And it's normally in two dimensions. You know, it shows large areas. It can either show neighborhoods or countries. And the main purpose of a map is to show how things relate to each other spatially. But more often than not, it also, it also shows other kinds of information. Now, I used that word a while ago, and I'm not sure if everybody knows what that word means. So let me test the chat, and let me test the students. Who can tell me what the word spatially means? Anybody? Ms. Matt David, you see, you see anybody responding on the, on the YouTube? Nobody yet. I give you one more minute before. Oh, I see some. I see. Oh, oh people and okay, okay, okay. On uh, the chat, yeah. um, Davian and Jaden say it means that it is spacious, and Jasmine says wide amount of area. I have one. Oh, go ahead. The way that it relates the space and the position, area, and the size of. Beautiful things within it. Beautiful. That is the that is the exact response which I was going to say. You are a very smart child. You are absolutely right. Beautiful. I love that response. I can see that we have some bright students on our chat and our and our, and on our YouTube, and you're all making me very proud today. Miss Matt David, I see the chat blinking. I don't yes. know if you want to say something else. No, not at, the, not at the moment. They're just making other comments. Okay, so we're going to move on now. And I'm going to be showing examples of maps. So you have, you can have a map of the world, as you can see right here to my immediate left. And then you can also have a map of the neighborhood. And I've given you the example of a Toronto neighborhood map, maybe a little bias, <laughs> given where I am, I am currently studying. But um, what you are seeing is different examples of, of, of types of maps that you can also encounter. So it's not just a map that has to do with your country or your parish, you know, especially with, with, with um, Google now. And, 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 the, and the internet, you can also see maps based on your neighborhood, okay? 
So if you are living somewhere, you're not sure, you can easily put it in and it comes up and it can show you exactly the, how your neighborhood is, is configured and how you can get to your point using Google Maps. So let's look at this other one now, map symbols. Who, who, has, who here has heard of the word map symbols? Anybody have any idea? Well, I, I'm, you're actually looking at it, so. Please. Go ahead, my dear. If a map symbol, if a map symbol is used to, to make symbols of a place on a map. Yes. Yes, I hear somebody say yes, please go ahead. Miss, um, map symbols are used to like locate like train stations, parking spaces, and you know, like parks and uh, trailers. Yes. Miss example of an airport, if there's an airport on the map, the 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 sign of uh, the plane is going to be on the uh, right beside the airport. Yes. Yes. Miss, it shows your different where different things are located on the map. Yes, thank you. Yeah, Miss, yes, Miss Williams. Um, someone Tahim says a map symbol is used to show places on a map, and Kayleen says like the keys on the map. Yes. Those were the, no one from YouTube has commented. But come on, YouTube, you guys. Thank you very much. And this is also important. We're not going to be looking at map symbols, what they are, and why it is important. Now, boys and girls, without the map symbols, you won't be able to understand what the map is telling you. And there are many times you, when you're watching your cartoons or you're watching the, 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 the different um, parrot shows, and you know they, they have the map, and they're saying they have to go and find the key to unlock, unlock the map. You're going to know, see why the key, the symbols are important to a map. So on my right, you're going to see a diagram showing different types of map symbols. I'm going to explain what, what are map symbols. They're used in the form of points, lines, or areas on maps to show location of and information about specific features. There's a bright little boy, I, I believe it was a boy, who said about the airplane and the plane, and, and on the map, you will show the plane where, where exactly where the airport was. Yes. Who, who was the bright child that said that? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. You are absolutely correct. Now, the color and the size of a symbol can give an indication of the type of features and its relative size. So basically, if you're looking at this map symbol on the right now, can somebody tell me, and I'm going to, I hope you can see my cursor. Can somebody tell me what they think this symbol means? I think it is a church. The church. It's a church? Yes. Is that a church? Yes, yes. This normal represents a church on the map. Yes. Let me find another example now. What do you think this symbol means on the map? Is parking spot? Parking lot. Parking lot. Very good. But there's a parking lot or a parking um, hall or a parking spot. The P normally represents parking on a map. So, yes, bright boys and girls, you're getting ready and you're understanding the importance of map symbols and how it unlocks the key. It unlocks the treasure of a map. So the meaning of map symbols in a key. So, what is a key? Now, map keys and map legends unlock the information on a map. They are essential to understanding the information maps provide by explaining what different symbols, icons, and colors represent. As I have said before, without a map key, maps would make little sense map legends another word for a map key and on my right on my right you're seeing an example of a map key remember i also gave you the example of when parrots were looking for their goal when they buried their goal and you, you saw it in whether you're watching parrots of the caribbean or other um parrot shows or any other de detective show when they were trying to find the, the treasure that was buried they always say we're looking for the key. 
because it is the key that will tell us where to look for the buried treasure. I hope that you are now understanding the importance of keys to a map and understand that just in case you walk into that, pop, that PEP exam and you see the word legend, it means the same thing as a key. Because sometimes when we're writing an exam, you know, boys and girls, we know the thing, you know, and we know we know it. And one little word in the exam throws us off completely. And then, you know, when we come up, we said, oh my gosh, that was what the word means. So know that map keys and map legends means the same thing, okay? Miss Matt David, any, any questions in the chat flashing? Any questions in the chat? Um, just some, some comments, um, some students are saying from like Kelisa and Justin that they understand. So I was just saying that I'm very glad that everyone and happy that they're understanding. Very good, very good. And that, you know what that means? That means big up to the teachers. Big up to the teachers that stuck it out with them through COVID and pulled them through. I, I, am, I am happy as a teacher myself, as a teacher trainer, when my little boys and girls come and tell me that they understand, I said, yes, big up to the teachers there because they put in the work. I'm just summarizing what they have done throughout the whole year. Let us move on. So this is where we have a map of Jamaica. And now we're going to get a little activity as it pertains to this map of Jamaica. I'm, I want you students to view the map of Jamaica and answer the following questions. Everybody ready? Yes. So I need to describe what you see on the map in front of you. We'll take about five, five responses, some from you too. Okay, notice something. Go ahead. Miss, miss notice that there's keys on the map. You know, you're listen to me, man. I'm going to make sure I inquire. I, I know you're going to do excellent because that was my second question, and you and you went right to it. But I, I um hold that point, you are right. But what else are the question I want? I want you to look at the, the before I get to the keys, and you are correct. What else are you seeing on the map? Um, we can see the parishes of Jamaica. Yes, yes that is correct. What else can you see on the map? You what can see the Caribbean Sea, the national capital, the capital, the capitals of the the roads and rivers and railroads. But we can see the borders. Okay, good. I, I hear I hear all the responses coming in. Miss Matt Dave, anything from YouTube? Really? Nothing from nothing from our YouTube students, but um Otona has said landforms. Landforms on the map. That's that's a very good student. I'm mm -hmm. closely at the map, but that is very good. We have some bright students online. Why well, they make me feel proud? They make me feel proud every time I hear them. I say, my gosh. And yes. Tanea says parish capitals. Yes. You can see railroads and rivers. Yes. Excellent, excellent response. So we're coming back to the second question, which, which a very bright boy said from the very beginning. I want you all to look closely at the key on this map and tell me what is shown in the key. It's because showing the national parish. capital. Parish, parish capitals, roads, and rivers. Miss Rivers. Miss Rivers. Yes. Um, railroads, railroads and parish boundaries. Parish boundaries. boundaries. National capital. All of you are correct and it's excellent. But there's something else I didn't hear from one person. I'm still waiting for that answer. What else is the scale? The scale. The scale. Ah, this Scale. And the scale is a very important part of a map because mm -hmm. the scale helps you to visualize mentally the spatial area which the map is representing. So uh, 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 another important component of a map is the scale. 
without the skill, persons are unable to mentally visualize the actual area which the map is representing. Remember that a map is a, give me the vision for a map, a map is a, quickly boys and girls, we said it at the very beginning. A map is a, two, representation of a country. What they said is, uh, we had said a map is two dimensional, remember? That's the word I'm looking for, which means that it is flat on the surface of this paper. A map is a two dimensional representation of a place in our country. Yes, because we had said it earlier. So when you understand that, then you know exactly what it is. So now we're going into map types. And that very bright child at the beginning of the class when I asked him to differentiate between maps and he told me map types. And I said, we're coming back to this. Now you're gonna see what he was talking about and why you have to be careful when you're writing that pep paper, you don't mix up the two. So there are many types of maps in an atlas, but we're not going to look at all of them now. We're going to stick to what you need to know for grade six. The rest you will learn as you go older and you go to high school and university. We're just gonna focus on what you need now for grade six. Now, the type of map, its symbols and colors are carefully selected to show the theme of each map and make them easy to understand. So, we're going to come to the issue of political and physical in a bit, but every map is designed to show a particular theme. Now, perhaps you may be wondering, well, what does Miss mean by a theme? And I have displayed it here. So, thematic maps are maps that emphasize a specific subject area or theme connected to a specific geographical area. For example, if the, if the map wants to show the total number of well, the type of vegetations in an area, then that map will only show vegetations in that area. If the map only wants to show soil, the type of soils in that area, then the map will only show the types of soil. So unlike general reference maps that show a variety of features, Thematic maps focus on a specific feature, for example, vegetation, as I said. So it's very specific what they focus on. So we're going to be looking at examples of thematic maps now. And we're going to start by the example of a physical or relief map. So on my left, you're going to see a picture of a map. It's a picture of Jamaican maps. And you're going to, well, you, well, what you're going to see, you're going to see that on this map, it shows certain physical features such as oceans, the sea, rivers, and the height of land. Boys and girls, are you seeing that? Yes. Yes, yes miss. So, okay. good. So, it means they know. Yes, miss. Okay. So, it means they know a physical or a relief map uses color to show these important images on a map. Ocean, seas, rivers, lakes, and heights. And remember, we are looking at issue of thematic maps. And for PEP grade six, the focus is on physical and political types of maps. You must know what the difference is. So, a physical map of the world shows landforms and the height of land using different colors. Usually, the highest areas are shown by dark purples and brown. Let us go back. It, it, it is saying usually on a physical map, they, it, 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 is, it is shown by different colors. It, it is shown, dark areas are shown by purples and browns. The lowest areas are shown by greens and areas in between are shown by lighter brown, greens and yellows. So I'm going to go back to a previous map before and you tell me. 
based on this definition, tell me if you are seeing the, 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 the different shades, the dark purples and the browns and the greens and areas in, in, um, on the map being shown. Are you seeing um, the dark areas on this map? Yes, please. Yes. Yes. So, yes. right yes. so right away, when you go into the PEP exam, and if you are given, if you are shown this type of map, and they may ask you to name the type of map in front of you, you know it is a physical or relief map. It's important for you to understand. Sometimes they may also ask you, describe what are the features of a relief map. Boys and girls, you must understand that relief map is the same as physical. So, you know, don't let the little interchanging of the words mix you up in the exam. You know it. I know you know it. The examiners know you know it, but we really have to test you. So sometimes if you know the popular word is physical, you might just see relief on the exam paper. But you know going in that physical and relief maps are the same thing. And you are going to answer that question from that point of view. So I have another little task for you now. I'm going to ask you to look at a physical map of the world in your atlases. You were told to bring your atlas, remember? I said, go for those atlases now. Misha, I have my own wish. Very good. And I want you to find, open your atlas, and I want you to find a physical map of the world or any place, any country. Just find a physical map. Excuse me, Miss, can I find the one of some continents? Yes, ma'am, any one that you desire. Just find a, it has to be a physical or a relief map. Okay? Now, here's what I want you to do I want you to examine the key and tell me how many different heights of land are shown from the key that you're seeing. Not, you know, the map is there, but look at the key. And tell me what are the different heights of land that are shown from the key. Miss, you, miss on the key, miss, you have, miss, it says for mountains over 4,000. Very good. Uh, miss, 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 and it says for planes, under 200. Very good, very good. Yes, you are, you are correct. Anybody else want to try? What other person, man? Come, man. Hey, Kayleen, what do you mean by 10 different ones? You mean 10 different maps? No, yeah, she, she said that how many, how many different heights are there? So I said 10 different heights. Oh, okay, understood. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Very much. But boys and girls, I want you to understand that the PEP exam is not just about content. It's about the ability to apply the content that you know to the information provided so you will have a good analysis of what is happening, okay? So just bear that in mind. So now we're going to be looking at an example of a political map. And I'm gonna give you one minute to look at it carefully. Please note the difference. Now, tell me before, I'm gonna read um, what is there for political maps. But can somebody tell me what are some of the things they're seeing coming out on this political map that is Miss um, is telling you the parishes, the capitals, Miss, the parish boundaries, Miss, and other cities. Yes, very good. Telling you the scale. Yes, very good. Very good. Now, on political maps, it provides an overview of size location and boundaries of countries in a specific area, such as a continent or in a country, regular, regular island like Jamaica. Colored squares indicate national capitals. So again, when you're given the map in the PEP exam and you look at the key, automatically you know that if it's a political map and it's a colored square, you know you're going to be looking for national capitals and the colored circles represent other cities and towns. So I, I, I chose this map because it's an excellent map. You could see very clearly 
the national um, capital through the squares, the, the colored squares. And then you could also see the parish capital through the circles. Now, looking on this map, which bright boy and girl want to tell me, name me a uh, parish capital? Miss, Miss Black River. Kingston. Miss Fort Black River. Maria. Okay. So, Montego Bay. Miss Pan Lucy. Fort Antonio. Maria. Maria. Spanish town. Spanish. Maypen. St. Andy. Black River. Thank you very much. I, I never, all of you got it correct. Now, can somebody looking on this map give an example of a, the national capital? Kingston. Yes. Kingston. 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 Yes. Kingston. Kingston. And of course, you know what's the final question coming out. Is there a name for any other cities being represented on this map? Yes. Yes, Which miss. Yes, miss. Yes, miss. Yes, tell me the name. Yes, tell me the name. Arbottown. Brownstown. Miss Long Bay. Portland Bay. Negro. Road, the road. alley. Yes, you're all correct. Miss Negril. Miss Negril. Miss Negril. Thank you very much, boys and girls. You're all correct. Miss Matt. Bag walk. Thank you, my dear. Miss Matt David. Any any response from you too? No. And I'm not seeing, um, I, I see the chat flashing, but Ms. McDavid, you know any, any response from the chat that you want to share with us? All right, so I guess not. So we're gonna just move on very quickly. So. Hold on, Miss. oh, sorry, Miss Williams. Yes, yes sorry. Um, Tanea said Buff Bay. Okay. Jaden said Bog Walk. Tahim Brownstone, Jaden again said Blue Fields, Kellen said Spanish Town. Yeah, man, our students doing well. Just wish our YouTube students would participate, but ah, oh, Otona says Maypen, Kelisa says Albert Town. Good job, guys. Yes, yes, very important. Thank you all for responding. And I, I hope you're beginning to see the correction between what is taught and the skill that you're going to need for the PEP exam. Because the PEP exam also going to be testing your skill and what skill you need to master the exam at this level. So we're going to move on. We're going to be looking at the following definitions. Habitat, mountains, hill, valley, plains, and plateau. So that's what we're going to be looking at now. So a habitat is a place or environment where a plant or animal naturally or normally lives and grows. And you can also look at the typical residence of a person or a group. So when we use the word habitat, we're looking at it from a multi-species perspective. When we say multi-species, we're talking about plants. When we say flora, animal, when we say fauna, and then of course we have the, the, the human beings as well in it. So habitat applies to all of those species and where they live. So th these are examples of habitats. The ocean is a habitat. The desert is a habitat. The forest is a habitat, the polar region, where is the ocean is a habitat, Miss? Miss the ocean. Yes, it is. The rainforest. Yes, the rainforest, the wet Miss tundras, Miss. Tropical yes. rainforest. And how many, let, let me ask another question. For the polar habitat, who, um, what, well, who, who do you think lives there? In the King animal, Miss Pope, Miss Miss Pope, Polar Bear, Penguin, Polar Bear, Penguin, Seal, Miss Polar Bear, Miss Walruses, Seal, and Penguins. 
Exactly. So you so you hear the animals that are coming out that live in the polar region. So in the oceans, can anybody give an example of what type of uh, species lives in the oceans? Miss fish, sharks, whales, miss fish, coral reef. Well, everybody spoke at once, so I did not hear. So can we just repeat it one at a time, please? Miss sharks, fishes, crabs, it's the coral reef. The, the octopus. The octopus, yes, the coral reef, yes. And if you know, I didn't Dolphin. hear it. It's the bullhead shark. Squid. Bullhead shark, yes. The jellyfish. The jellyfish. Dolphins. Yes. And so if you know something, you realize that you, you gave me examples of both fish and plants living in the oceans. And that's important because when you are looking at man's interaction with the environment and the habitat, and we're speaking about taking care of the ocean, it is not just because we want people to come and swim in it. It's because they actually have bodies that live in the ocean. You have fish that live in the ocean. You have plants that live in the ocean. And so we have to be very mindful as human beings that we, when we throw our plastic buckle in the ocean, it, it, it doesn't disappear. It affects the species living in the oceans. Okay. Ms. Williams, there are so many um, people know their aquatic life. Um, I see um, Joshua says starfish. Jaden says plankton. Um, Jaden again is saying algae. I was like, wow. Red snapper, lobster, jellyfish. Excellent, excellent response. Miss Salmon. Salmon, yes, excellent response. Miss that's my last name. Yes, I am, I am so proud of all of you. You are absolutely correct. So we have the idea of how important the habitat is to all of us living and why we should take care of it and preserve our environment. So now we're going to be looking at lowlands. And of course, when we talk about lowlands, we can we it's either can be talking about either plains or valleys. So once you see the exam is asking about, for example, whatever it is, lowlands, you must immediately realize that lowlands is referring to plains or valleys, either or. So you have to read further in the question to find out exactly what is it the examiner is asking you. Now for plains. Plains are long or wide areas of flat lowland, less than 100 meters above sea level, often along the coast. And here we have a nice picture of a plain. Now, for valleys, it's normally an area of lower land between two hills or mountains, and, and, and it's normal valleys may have flat bottoms and gently sloping our steep slides, valleys often have rivers running through them, okay? Now, I have a, here's another little activity for all of you. Now, I want you to take your atlases again and find the map of Jamaica in your atlas. So you're gonna turn to the map of Jamaica in your atlas, Found it, Miss. Good. It's color political. Yes. And then, no. About, sorry, there was a question asked about political or physical. Miss, yes. Miss Bruce was asking what kind of map should they find, political or physical. Oh, that's a bright person already. I'm going to say to you, find a physical map of Jamaica. Because when you find that physical map of Jamaica, I want you to locate a valley and a plain. And I want you to provide me with an example of one valley in Jamaica and an example of a plain in Jamaica. Now students, before you guys shout out the answers, remember, give other students, fellow students a chance. So if you shout out one, just shout out the one and let someone else shout out one, okay? Okay, so 
Okay, guys? So we can hear from everybody. Miss Ligardine Miss Plain. Simon Plain. Miss George's Plain. Ligoni Plain. Burva yeah. Plain. Yeah. Bernard Valley. Miss Miss um Miss Miss George's Plain. Yes, George. I heard George's Plain. That is correct. I heard Ligoni Plain. That is correct. There's Bear a plane. Plane. Aileen says Bear Plain. Tanea says Pedro Plain. Pedro Plain. Pedro Plain Miss. Miss, there's one more, Miss. What's the other one more? So far, all of you have been right. Miss St. Jago Plain. Do we all agree? Uh, Joshua says Red Knot Valley. Oh, oh yes, Miss St. Jago Plain is one. Okay, we, we soon get to the valley, but yes, St. Jago Plain is correct. I was asking if you all agree and nobody responded, but one person. But yes, St. Jago Plain is one. Now we're getting to the valleys. Example of valleys for my students. Miss Simmons Valley. Pardon me? Simmons Valley. Simmons Valley, yes. What else? Queen of Spain Valley. Yes, Queen of Spain Valley, yes. What else? Miss Birdknot Valley. I didn't get that. Which one? Birdknot Valley. Where is Birdknot Valley? Um, Miss, I'm not sure, but I think it's in Saint Elizabeth. Okay. Anybody else? Thank you for that response. Anybody else? Then I got. Okay. So what I'm going to do, I'm not, I'm not going to show. Oh, Miss Williams, we have Morant Valley yes. from. Kaylin. Yes. Garden River Valley from Jaden. Yes. All correct. Yes. And so now I'm going to show you some examples of valleys in Jamaica. In Trelawney, and I heard somebody say, we have the Queen of Spain Valley. In Hanover, we had the Great River Valley. In Westmoreland, we have the Dean Valley. St. Catherine, Luada's Vale. St. Mary, St. Thomas in the Vale. Portland, Rio Grande Valley. And another example is St. Thomas Planting Garden. We're doing good so far, students. So we have left the lowlands and we're now going to the highlands. Highlands can be divided into hills, mountains, and plateaus. So when we speak of a hill, we're saying hills are usually between 100 meters and 500 meters above sea level and usually have gentle slopes. And I know it might be a little difficult to visualize 100 meters versus a 500 meters, but anywhere above that, it's a hill. When you, 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 you know, it's, it, it, it has to be more than just a little ants mount. You know, you know when ants building their, 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 their nest and, and a little hill is form on the ground? Well, yes, ants, miss. And, 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 and hill. Well, the, the hills that we're looking at, it has to be between 100 and 500 meters. And the height is very important because over that amount, we get what is known as a mountain. And so we say a mountain is a natural elevation of the Earth's surface, rising more or less abruptly to a summit and attaining an altitude greater than a, of a hill. Usually it's greater than 2,000 feet, okay? And of course, to the right, we have a picture of Blue Mountain Peak, okay? So, where yeah. am I? Yes, go ahead. Sorry, um, Kaylin says, Miss, I've heard that some hills can be over 500 meters. Okay. Yes, there are some hills that can be over 500 meters, but they, 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 once they are over 600 meters, then we no longer say it's a hill, we say it's a mountain. But yes, there are hills that can be 
over 500 meters and they're still considered to be a hill. Excellent point, excellent point, student, excellent point. So where are a number of mountains joined together? We call this a mountain range. The highest point at the top of the mountain is also called a peak. No, boys and girls again, look at your map of Jamaica and tell me what is the symbol, the, the map of Jamaica, the physical map of Jamaica, we're going to the key now and tell me what is the symbol for a mountain peak? A triangle. Miss, it is, a, miss, it is like a triangle, miss. Yeah, it's like how it's a triangle. Yes, it's a triangle. 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 Yes, you are correct. It's a triangle type, and we're going to get to the triangle type now. But before we do that, can anybody name me two mountain peaks that they've seen on the map of Jamaica? Junker Mountain. Junker Mountain. Junker Mountain. Dry Harbor Mountain. Mountain. Okay, I heard. Salim says Bullhead. Yes. Junker Mountain. Miss Miss Mount Diablo, Moko Mountain, yes. Junker Mountain, Anchor, Sanka, um, Santa Cruz Mountain. Yes. Figueroa Mountain. Yes. Blue Mountain. Mountain and Blue Mountain. Okay. Thank you very much, students. I heard. Let me just repeat what I heard. I heard Blue Mountain Peak. Correct. I heard John from Mountain, correct? I heard, um, is, it, is it Mount Diablo or, or, or uh, which is the other one that I heard? Um, there's somebody said Bullhead, Mount Santa Cruz, Cruz Mountain. Yes, yes, all correct, all correct. So, and here we are looking at different examples of mountains in Jamaica. We just said it, the Blue Mountain, the John from Mountain, the Wandibolas Mountain, Dry Harbor Mountain in Santa Cruz, uh, also is one of them. And again, Miss so Mocha Mountain, Mocha Mountain, Mocha Mountain. Oh yes, much Mocha Mountain. Yes, Miss. Where are you finding Mocha Mountain? Miss, that Miss Miss that Miss that would be in um kind of. Yes, you are correct. Um, miss, what about Dolphin Head Mountain in Hanover? Yes, Dolphin yes, Head. Yes, Miss, that is also one of them. Yes, Dolphin Head Mountain is also one of them. I just pulled these examples. And to the right, the picture on the right is a picture of Blue Mountain Peak in Jamaica. So, um, and, and, and um, it's a very nice picture of Blue Mountain Peak in Jamaica. So, I asked the question, how would you know that um, the height of a mountain, and all of you gave me the correct answer about the triangle and, and, and with the dot in it. Now, the triangle in the dot, if you look to the, the, the right of the screen, the triangle with the dot in it you're going to see is, a, is, is what is on a trigger mod, trigonometry station. And the trig station or triangulation pillars are another way of spotting the top of a mountain on a map. The symbol for a trig point is a small triangle. So yes, you are all correct in saying that when you looked and you want to see the height of the mountain, you saw the small triangle, you were quite right. Now, Another quick activity. Using your map of Jamaica, can someone locate a trig station and state the height and the parish in, in, in which it is located? Listen carefully. It's not on my map. Okay, look, look, listen carefully again. Maybe you might have to switch from a physical to a political map. But using the map of Jamaica, I want you to locate the trig station and state the height that you find any trig station and which parish it is located in. Miss? Yes? Miss Rowney Hill, Miss? But I want you to tell me the height that you're looking at. What is that? 350? 350 meters. Oh, I, I like that second answer. You completed it by saying meters. So don't just say 350 
you have to say 350 meters. Now, which station is that trig station, which parish is that trig station located in that you just told me about? Miss Blue Mountain? Um, Miss Blue Mountain is in Japanese. Hold on, Miss Williams. Apparently, I'm not sure what's going on with the delay. Hold on, hold on, students on Zoom. Um, Miss Williams, apparently something has been going on with the YouTube on my end. So I apologize. Apparently, this um students have been actually responding, but there is, seems to be some severe delay. So I severely apologize. So we have students um who are telling us all the different mountains that they saw. So sorry, Davi, Davina, Shante, Nazario, Alex, yo, Alexia, Matthew, all of these students. So there's so like um. Anne Murray, Anna Murray says 350 meters. Corzan was saying 3,500. Roblox was saying 3,500. Um, and someone was saying the trick station is in Hanover. And someone was, um, Shaw Mikia was saying it's in Portland. So I apologize, students. I'm not sure what went wrong with the YouTube, why I wasn't seeing your responses. Apologies. Thank you very much, Miss Matt David, and thank you all students for participating. And the important point, of, the important objective of this activity is not just so you know what is a trick station, it's for you to be able to use that information of what is a trick station and locate it on the map. And then in locating it on the map, understand what it means. So if it says 250 meters, it means at that point on the map where the trick station is, it means that that physical feature is 350 meters above ground. So you have to be able to make that connection between what you learn and what you actually see physical in front of you in a map. Because that is what the, the, the PEP will be testing. Not just the content, but actually what you see in front of you. Um, Miss Williams, so it's three. So the answer is 3,500 meters. Okay. That was the answer of the trick station. No, I just I, confirm it. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much. So we're going to move on. Again, we have a little activity. So we're seeing, uh, I have given you mountains and the meters. And I want you to use the following information to arrange the mountains or hills according to height from the lowest to the highest. that gets the answer can let me know you are arranging these mountains from the lowest to the highest Albion mountain yes Albion mountain is for IP Albion mountain Kowan Debolas mountain Derby Peak Dunkel Mountain and then Blue Mountain. Okay, stop. I couldn't hear everybody. So I was going to ask one person. Miss David? Dunkel Mountain. Yes. Then Abolian Mountain. Yes. And the Mountain. Then Derby Peak. And then Blue Mountain Peak. Go back again. I need to, I, I need to hear what you said. The first one was? John Crow Mountain. No. Miss, it should be Albion Mountain. Mo. Don't say yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Miss Williams, yeah. Alexia says on YouTube, Albion, Wonder Bolas, Derby, John Crow. Um, Shaw Mikia says the same thing, Albion, Wonder Bolas, Derby, 
John Crow Blue. All right, thank you very much. No, I'm happy to um, is is the the the, 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 is, the is it two the two students? I forget your name. Is the um I think it's two brothers. But they oh, Davion and Jaden. Yes. Cousins. 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 Davion and Jaden. No. When you answered, you mixed up the instructions, you know, because it says uh, the height from the lowest to the highest. And your response yeah. answer the question because you started with Albion Mountain and then I think you had mentioned Derby. So you have to be very careful when you're answering the question. Again, yes, you might know the answer, but it's not just the fact that you know the answer is that you must answer the question which the examiner has asked. That is the point for any exam. Never you walk into the exam and answer the question you think the examiner should have asked. When you walk into that exam, you must only answer the question that you have been asked by the examiner. So this is a little trick question because here it says, you are going to arrange the mountains and the hills according to height from the lowest to the highest. So if you did not read the entire question, you'd have gone ahead and you would have arranged what you thought the examiner should have asked and then you'd have gotten the answer wrong. And then you'd have come out and get upset and say, I don't understand why I get it wrong. But you never follow the instructions. So yes. William, yes. we have um, a lot of our YouTube students yes. um, seem to I think they got all of I think these are from St. Hughes Prep. Yes. Um, excellent guys. Um, and I see Lilani. She says, sorry, Mr. Type Slow. It's okay, love. We we, we understand. Um, yes. so that it's so just to confirm that it's Albion, Wonder Bolas. Derby, John Crow, and Blue Mountains. We see your answers from Anna, Justin, Liz, Nazario, Kaylee, Tiana, Alexia, Zahim. All right, great job, guys. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, this is the point. I'm going to point out something to you. Sometimes some hills are called mountains, and some mountains are called hills. Example Amity Mountain in Westmoreland is 104 meters high. It is therefore a hill and not a mountain. But you know, we have a colloquial culture. And sometimes we say, you know, there is a mountain, but now that you're understanding the difference, you must know that it is the height that makes the difference between a hill and a mountain. So this is an example of a plateau and a plateau is an area of raised land that is flat on top. And we see the example there. So we are now winding down. You have all been good and I want to thank you. So we're winding down and we're going to be looking at the impact of human activities on our environment. And there are many times that we talk about it and we, I spoke about it earlier in the habitat and throwing the plastic bottle in the ocean and thinking it's going to go somewhere and it won't affect anybody, but we have to begin to think multi-species. It's going to affect the plant, it's going to affect the, 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 the fish, it's going to affect the other sea life that is there, as well as other human beings down the road trying to get some water to drink, or just don't want them also to be flooded when, when the rain falls. So, when you are farming, and you're farming on slopes, and you're farming crops, example, bananas and coffees, the impact on the environment, if it's not done properly, you will have landslide. Because it's, it's not just a matter of going and you're plowing up the land and you're dropping some seeds there. You have to plant along the contours of the land. And if you don't plant along the contours of the land, what will result is landslide. And, and landslide will result in loss of crops possible loss of life, possible loss of livestock, and of course, loss of, of, of structure. 
homes might be destroyed, buildings might be destroyed. So one of the ways that you can intervene in this is issue of terracing, you know, and, and I'm going to show you a picture of terracing in, 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 our, in the next slide. But it, it is a way of you, you are building like a retaining wall and it helps the, the, the soil from going down into on the road, uh, uh, into homes and onto people. Now here's another one. When we decide we're going to build our house and we, we have seen it several times on the news and boys and girls, as you prepare for PEP, remember to watch the news at night. Whether it's the seven o'clock news or the eight o'clock news, Take some time and watch the news because all that you are learning, you will see it on the news and you will be able to connect what you're learning to the news items better. So when we go and we build our homes, we can't just build our homes anywhere. We have to be very mindful of the impact that it can have. For example, landslides again, you know, you go and you and, and persons are just putting down bricks not aware that even if, if it's not landslide, there's also flooding because some homes can be built in, 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 in ponds, in, in uh, yes, they're, they're, they're called dry ponds. And it, the pe persons may not realize that it's a pond until heavy rain start and it start, the floods start. So we have to be very mindful of where we build our houses and our shops. Now, the one way that we can help to mitigate, well, not let, mitigate is it to minimize the effects of, of, of the, the impact of human activity is by building retaining walls. Retaining walls are the, are, are the big walls that help to um, rein, reinforce um, houses, you know, make them stronger, our church is stronger. Now, another example of human activity of when we're cutting down the trees and we'll cut it down for charcoal. Deforestation me. Yeah, oh gosh, that's a bright girl. Yes, deforestation. Yeah, Miss Williams, we have um some students on YouTube saying thank you for the tip. They're saying they watch the news. Um Alexia says landslides, Nikolai says erosions, Shanicia says landslides, Nazario rain washes soil away. Um, yes, and Nazaria says deforestation, and Kaylin says there is soil degradation that will cause the house to not build properly. That that is a bright girl degrad soil degradation. That is good. I think I think Kaylin is a young gentleman. If oh. I'm not mistaken, Kaylin. Sorry, yes, Kaylin, you're there. Yes, I'm a girl, Miss. A girl, you lie. Oh my goodness, me embarrassed myself even worse. Oh my God. All right, me go have hang down my head in shame. But well, thank you very much. David is, is, is sorry. Sorry. Thank you. Sorry, my love. Sorry. Thank you very much. You're a bright, bright little girl. And of course, one of the ways that we can prevent deforestation is, is the issue of replanting of the trees. Or there's another big word that we use. Reforestation, me? Yes, reforestation. Reforestation. Yes. Yes, my boys and girls, you are so bright. Yes, it's called reforestation. Very good. So I'm going to show you some examples, some pictures of, of, of what we just discussed. On the left is a picture of a landslide, a massive landslide happened in Garden Town, St. Andrew. Recently, I believe it, it was November. So it, was, it is within your pep year. Do not be surprised if you see something like that on your exam because it happened within your pep year. And if you notice, the landslide of boulders came down off the mountain and it, had, it, it blocked the road. So much so that um, persons had great difficulty even after the rains um, left to, 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 to cross over. And this topic now, you saw it a lot on the news, the, the massive landslide up in Garden Town. Miss Williams, yes. we have some, some students on YouTube saying reforestation, Joel saying slash and burn, um, Kyle is talking about terracing, is a oh, good I'm way to prevent soil degradation. Yes. Thank you guys on YouTube. Okay, thank you very much. Let me just go back to this picture just a bit. Slash and burn is one of the ways in which the trees are cut down in the environment. 
And because it's one of the ways that is cut down in, in, in the environment, it is the destruction of the habitat. It's not a good way to practice farming. Don't do it, okay? So you, you, so, so you have that there is a whole cutting down of the environment. So we saw a picture of Garden Town and a picture of a retaining wall. Look at the picture of a retaining wall in Jamaica. Yes, that's a picture of a retaining wall. Miss Williams, so yes. sorry to just interrupt. Um, Joel, sorry, Justin on YouTube is asking, please can you um, define, differentiate what a landslide is from erosion? Okay, all right, good question. Now, the, 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 let me go back to the picture of a landslide. Soil erosion and the landslide, they're, they're used interchangeably because so, so, um, a soil erosion happens once the, the, the trees have been cut down and then the soil begins to move. And, and once the soil begins to move, it can, I, I, I should create, they're not used interchangeably. Soil erosion can contribute to, to a landslide, but not necessarily. Because when you see where once the, once the trees are moved from, from the, the earth, if, there, if, if, if grass is not planted, if flowers are not planted, then nothing is there to grab the soil, to, to make it firm and to make it not move. So if nothing is moving, then once the rain start or earthquake or any uh, earth movement, then what you have is the movement of earth and the movement of earth can um, result from the soil erosion, meaning the, the, the top soil has gone from the land surface and only leaves the other layer of soil. Now, the movement of this surface can result in landslides taking place. Excuse me, miss. Yes? Does a landslide happen when rain falls heavily? That's, that is a main way in which landslides can happen, but it's not the only way. Because if you have a, 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 a earthquake or so, it can contribute to a landslide, depending on what on, on, on the type of soil erosion taking place. That is why I went back and I corrected myself and I said soil erosion can lead to a landslide, but it is not the same. Okay, um, I hope that answers your question, Justin, who is on YouTube. Um, we also have some of our students saying that there are no roots holding the soil. Alexia says she sees retaining walls mostly on the highway. Um, Treasure says we need to replant trees. Um, Chrissy says landslides include mud flows, earth slumps, rock falls, and other types of slope failures. Landslides can be slow, wet or dry, small or large shallow or deep okay chrissy um all right chrissy i've gone with with all of that information thank you and kaylin says people think slash and burn is a good way of clearing trees because the ash will give the soil nutrients but it's not um for the last response it is actually not uh, a good way to, 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 to clear uh, an area because I, I know it is often said that the, the ash will, will give the nutrients, but it is, it, it is not so. When you do slash and burn, more often than not, you do, you do greater impact to the environment around you. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Williams. Yes. So this is an example of our retaining wall. And this is a picture of terracing. So one of the solutions we spoke about to the impact on, in, on the environment was terracing. And it, it, it's basically when you plant along the contour of a hill or a mountain, which means along the slopes of a hill or mountain. So when you do that now, it prevents soil erosion. And when you prevent soil erosion, it prevents landslides from happening. So we have a picture of, 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 of terracing on the left. Any questions on that? Are there a lot of terracing in Jamaica? Well, I know that there are a few, for example, uh, up in Stony Hill, uh, when you're on your way to St. Mary, there's a wonderful um, 
contour planting terracing that is there, that has been there for a good 15, 20 years. There, there are some air, other areas in Jamaica where terracing is, 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 is practiced, but unfortunately it is not very common. We need to practice more of it. Miss Williams, is terracing the same as step farming? Matthew on YouTube is making that comment. Asking, or he's as, or, or, or he's, oh, then someone says yes. Is step farming and terracing the same thing? Oh, he's making a comment. Yes, two students ask that question. Okay. Yes. Miss. Yes. Go ahead. Someone is asking. The same as contour farming. If terracing is the same as contour farming. Yes. That's that's the question you're asking? Yes, miss. Yes, it is. It okay. is. We won't talk about contour farming yet because you are planting along the, the, the contours of the hill. So, yes, it is. Okay, miss. Any other questions? Um, one student, um, Nazario, is saying that they don't understand terracing. And is asking, and then um, Kaylee is saying, how does it stop erosion? Okay. Hmm. All right. Let me. All right. You, you don't understand terracing. Let me try and explain it in a way to help you in uh, as best as possible. The the mountain have natural grooves on the sides of it, and when you are a farmer and you're planting certain crops on the mountain to get the best result from your crop, you have to plant it along the grooves of the mountain. So when you plant along the grooves of the mountain, that's what, that's what we say is contour um, planting or, or terracing. Terracing is, 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 is you plant along the grooves of the mountain to make sure that the, 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 um, the soil does not erode, to make sure that it, 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 it um, I'm trying to put it in a way for grade six. So it, to make sure that the soil doesn't erode, to make sure that it's the best use of the land and to make sure that um, human and animal life is preserved. So instead of, your, if, you're, if you have a mountain, if you cut, um, differently, as opposed to the grooves um, at the, uh, of how the mountain runs, then when the rain comes, it won't have any buffer to stop the soil from moving. What, what, man can, what God has done, what nature has done, is provided the, 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 the mountains in its natural element with a sort of buffer to protect mankind. And in that protection, that's how you get the grooves, that's how you get the, the buffering, that's how you get uh, the contours. So when you are planting, and if you plant along the contours, when the rain falls, it, 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 it won't affect the, the, the movement of the soil so much. Whereas if you decide to go against it, and you plant in a in, in a in the opposite direction, then when the rain comes, then when the soil, when the heavy showers come, it it, 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 it will go against the natural force. And so adding to possible landslides in the area. I hope I was able to explain, you know. Yeah, I hope it, well, it seems, Miss Williams, that some of the students like Jay have said they understand um and some students are saying that crop rotation is good for the soil nutrients um a few actually are talking on youtube like kyle and matthew and treasure about global warming and climate change wow. and how all of these things such as slash and burn um contribute to all of this and they're asking are we going to cover global warming today but boy, I think that is a whole lecture by itself, guys. Climate change, global warming. Like, yes. whoo, poor yes. Miss Williams, guys. Yes. We, we, yeah. <laughs> and I should say, students, remember 
that a, a, a bulletin was sent to your school from the Ministry of Education telling the school what topics will be coming in the PEP social studies exam. So as closely as possible, this presentation is trying to stick to what topics will be tested in the social studies PEP exam coming up. You have some very good questions about global warming and climate change, but ask your teacher just to recheck that school bulletin to see if that topic will be tested this year in the social studies PEP exam. And, and um, that is also the reason, boys and girls, why I am also not touching the topic of latitude and longitude for this session. Because the bulletin clearly highlighted that that test topic was not going to be tested in this um, for, for this year. So there's a bulletin that was sent out and it tells you the topics that will be tested. But I like your thinking, global change, global warming. I am impressed. And with that, we have come to the end of my presentation. And I want to thank all of you boys and girls for listening and being so active. So much money I make. Right. And I am, I'm impressed and, and I, I feel good as a, a social studies examiner that um, the students, from what I see, I, I think the, the nation students will be able to handle the, this year's PEP exam from where I sit. I am impressed. Okay, we have some more comments from you too, Miss Williams. Um, again, the, the students are clearly very passionate about global warming. Um, you know, um, um, Shamikia is talking about air pollution. Jay is saying factories help to increase global warming. They're talking about acid rain. Um, I was like, wow. So, I mean, other than, I know you guys um, may need to go. Some students has, have told me that they had to leave already. But do any of you have any questions for Miss Williams? Any of our YouTube students? Any of our students online? You guys are very welcome. People on YouTube are saying thank you. They're saying thank you so much. You're so welcome, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And don't forget to ask to ask your class teacher to set the bulletin about the topics that are coming this year for the PEP social strategy. It was sent out by the ministry. And this video will also be online um, on YouTube so that if you need it to review or you know, just you know, to share it with your classmates who couldn't attend today, please um, do so. very much so anybody i say omari says they understand kelisa says thank you justin says thank you and shamikia chrissy diana all right zaim says them good all right you guys sure you're good you have a captive here on the youtubes and the zoom you know you now get this chance again guys so much sure if, if they can leave. Uh, just just lean. Everybody saying thanks, 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 Chrissy. All right, Chrissy. All right, Matthew. Miss, my name is oh. Jazlyn, not Jazlyn. Oh, awesome. apologies, guys. Thank you, Jazlyn. Yes, thank, thank you, you Jazlyn. Um, all right. Well, Kyle said love the presentation. Oh, Joel says what causes acid rain? Is that? Relevant, Miss Williams. Miss, I know, Miss, Miss, I know what caused acid rain. Oh, oh, okay. Somebody wants to answer. All right, Miss. Go right ahead. Miss, what causes acid rain, man? This is thing that causes acid rain, Miss. All right, Miss. It, it is when it is when people burn garbage, Miss, and then Miss, Miss, Miss. Then some, Miss. Then sometimes, Miss. Then sometimes when you go in the water, Miss, and then evaporation starts to happen, Miss. Some of that, Miss. Some of that. Like some of that garbage that has been burned will 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 be mixed in the condensation mist and then rain start to fall, miss. 
they call it acid rain miss because when miss because when the rain touches the leaves the leaves fall off the tree that's why they call it acid rain thank you very much you're a bright boy yes oh miss williams some students were just asking if this was the last class on youtube um that we'll be doing and yes unfortunately guys this is it we had a class on tuesday which was about our common heritage and that's on youtube so you guys um can look at that video but yeah this is it um sorry we, we <laughs> this is a lot guys and we are so grateful for miss benny who did it on tuesday and miss williams who is on with us today um so i mean if we have any more don't worry we will be contacting your schools but yeah that's it this is the last one um so miss williams so that answered global warm um acid rain correctly well yes it did and and i see that you are enthusiastic and i know maybe and I, I need to say hmm I, I need to go back and say look like we have to go put that in the global warming i don't know <laughs> It looks that I know, way. I mean, miss, I know about global warming, Miss. I can tell you everything about global warming. You guys, oh geez. Okay. You will teach the class. Okay. We'll make you come in. Who is that? Miss, is that Sean or Otona? Who Miss said Sean, 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 you know Sean. everything about global. Yo, Sean, let me tell us. So we will book you. We'll ask your parents if it's all right. And you can teach the hour. I we know you're ready. We hear it in your voice, Sean. You're ready. Okay. Okay, Miss. <laughs> but yes, it seems, Miss Williams, that um a lot of the students are, a lot of them even on YouTube are talking about global warming, acid rain, um, like what causes it, what you know. So it looks like that might, even though, I'm, as you said, Miss Williams, that's not what's gonna be on the exam. For I, 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 I'm not sure about that. It, it is it, the topics were put in the bulletin. In so, the bulletin, yes. right? Somebody sent out a bulletin um, about two or three weeks ago with a list of topics. So I, I am not sure if, if that was one of them that was um, placed in it. But if they go, if they check back the school, um, they will see that the bulletin went out to the schools. I learned okay. them. I okay. that. That's the language would, um, is, is, is one of the topics um, thus far. Are there any changes? I know they will reissue a bulletin. But I know when um that's why I didn't present in this for workshop on national language. Okay, great. All right, guys. Um let us let us sign off for today. Again, thank bye. you. Um, bye guys on Zoom. Bye, bye everyone on YouTube. Thank you. we really appreciate bye. it. And bye. 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 If you guys have any questions for us off air. All of your teachers and some of your parents have our Bye, contact Israelite. information. So just email us or call us and we'll do our best to help you guys out off air. You know, so don't worry. We're here for you still. Okay? That's what we are as educators. Bye, miss. Okay, bye, miss. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Bye, miss. Thank you. Bye.